Since it's become day ticket, it's given me an access to come to one, probably one of the best day ticket waters in the country now. Um, it used to be a syndicate that was, I believe, very tough to get on. Um, so we've come to the quarry, um, where in fairness, it's now accessible to, to everybody to enjoy. Um, so when I was offered the chance, I jumped at it to get, to get on here and wet a line, so to speak. So. Because it's been non-accessible and I've read about it in books, in Daryl's book, and some of the fish are out, real old English stunners that are becoming rarer and rarer. Um, size is easy material, although the weights in here are really good weights um, for, the, for the stamp of fish as well. Um, and just a place steeped in, in, in history, really, that's, you know, uh, drawn me to the place. Um, it's obviously accessible on a day ticket now, so it gives everybody the chance to to come and have a go and experience it. So really that's what, you know, I've come here just to enjoy it. I spent a fair bit of time uh, looking around today. I stood in a good, good couple of areas where I thought I'd see fish and didn't really see anything. The majority of what I've seen has been in front of me. So it was a no-brainer really for me to come into here. I probably saw in the region of about 30, 40 shows um, on the area that I've put my baits uh, about 80 yards, just under, just under 80 yards. Um, it was enough of a sign for me to come and fish in here. Um, the other areas, a couple of areas looked barren. One looked quite reasonably good, but I didn't really see anything there that inspired me. And as I came back round this area of the lake, they were they were starting to show and head and shoulder in and fizz in and, and just doing all the characteristics that carp do really. I decided to get the float out and uh, I cast it out about 90 yards, started bringing it back, bringing it back and it ran really smooth um, on an area. It was surrounded by a bit of blanket weed and stuff like that and just a bit of Canadian. When I popped the float up at 12 foot, it was an area that they'd repeatedly showed on. After about 40, 45 yards, there's a nice gravel area um, that would be a good area to present baits to, but I'm a firm believer in fish where they're showing. And the area that I found was ever so smooth silt. The ledge just glided along um, a good depth because the weather's changed. The weather's you know, gone a little bit colder, so they'll probably be getting in this deeper water. And the depth I've got out there is just under 12 foot. More importantly, it drew me to here because there was fish here. And that's the key, is getting on fish. I've been told the fish in the quarry love bait um, and, and hits can be possible. Um, and it's a style of fishing I love doing. So in fairness, I gave them a bucket of uh, spod mix um, and fished three rods as tight as I could around that float. I can create almost like a pack mentality. So if I can get my rods tight enough into that area, then often multiple bites um, are forthcoming sort of thing. So, um, you know, I know there's a lot of old, original, real historic fish in here. Um, and I could get one, but I think my, my, I'm basing my theory on if I can get four or five, there's a very good chance that I could have a couple of originals. So the bait I've been using is quite a lot of sweet corn, quite a lot of sell, the trout pellet, a bit of hemp just to, to bind the mix up but I've given them like a five litre bucket of bait, probably 50, 60 spots worth of bait, nice and tight onto an area. Um, my theory being that when they come on me, it could be action stations and happy days. Rig wise, I'm using a between a 10 and 12 inch um, supple braided hook length. Um, reasons for that is obviously I'm fishing on smooth silt, so I want it to present well. I also believe when I'm particle fishing, a braided hook length behaves better um, and the fish can feed more confidently on it than a, perhaps a coated hook link. That's in my personal opinion. Hook bait wise, um, it's quite a simple choice for me. I use a pine mainline pineapple juice, um, little 12 mil pop-ups, um, and then I whittle them down with a size number six shot on them. So they're almost as, you know, as big as your fingernail sort of thing, almost like a barrel shape. Um, and they've proved deadly for me this year so far. I've got maximum confidence in them. Um, and then from just talking to some people who have fished here before, have told me that squid, uh, bait soaked in squid goo is very, very successful. So I've put one rod on a, on a squid goo pop-up, so I'm quite confident that if it does happen, 
we could have a few fish tonight. So we'll see. In fairness, these quarry fish are amazing fish. So to, to get one tonight would really make my trip a resounding success. Um, you know, a place steeped in history, real character fish would be excellent, would be all I could really ask for to actually catch one. It'd mean that I've caught out of one of the historical waters, always wanting to get on, um, had the chance to, to finally come and wet a line. So, you know, I suppose it would be another chapter in my angling or my carp fishing log book that I could say, yeah, I've, I've been there and I've achieved that sort of thing. The night went really, really well for me. I had two in the evening. Um, then I had a couple of fish early hours, uh, 24 and a half, half past one. Um, I was unlucky, I lost a couple in the night as well. And then just as it was getting light, I've, um, I've just not long had a mid-20 common. It absolutely roared off, and I'm fishing at about 80, 85 yards. Literally hooked it, and it started to flat rod me, taking line off the, off the clutch. Really good fight, you know, trying to do me in lots of weed beds and stuff like that. Um, finally got it in, um, knew it was a good fish, really, really happy. And uh, as all my bites have been in quite quick succession, not like one after the other, um, and literally just done the photos for that, and the rod roars off again, and it's a lovely scaly mid-double uh, mirror. Um, so I'm really, really happy, really delighted with how things have gone so far. Oh mate, the, the scaly one I had was an absolute pearl. I believe that there's uh, some new fish gone in. This was absolutely scale perfect, really nice. You know, almost one of them fish that you don't really want to put back. You just you want to have him sort of like just to look at all the time. Scale perfect, mouth perfect. You know, been well looked after, well cared for. Just a real joy. Size is irrelevant, really. It was an absolute joy to catch him. I'm absolutely shattered. Um, I've probably had about three hours of sleep. When I got my bite up past one, the rain was some of the heaviest rain I've seen for a long, long time. Um, you know, I came back into the bivy and I was like an absolute drowned rat. But I'm buoyed by the success and the, um, and the fish I've caught. So the tiredness is in the background of my mind. And it's all about, for me, putting the effort in, working hard, and seeing if we can uh, get the results that we deserve from it. In fairness, what I've, what I've been doing throughout the session really, but certainly this morning, is every, every couple of bites, I'll give them another five litre bucket of hemp, pellet, corn, and chopped up cells, and some, a few fish meals in there as well, religiously, because I believe that when, when they're coming on me, there's a pack of fish coming on me, and they, quite often they can clean me out. But certainly this morning, um, while that wind dropped, I, I was managed to get, get some more bait back out there. Um, I think the way they feed, um, the fish in here obviously like their bait. I've gone through three buckets so far. Well, I've got the rest of the day. Um, you know, there's a decent amount of bait back out there. There's fish showing in and around the area. You know, hopefully, fingers crossed, a few more fish may grace my net um, and I'll have a few more to show you. Right, we're coming towards the end of the session now. Um, it's been really hard work, tiring, but I came here to catch an original, and I'm pleased to say, mission accomplished. Um, I was down by the water's edge this morning, just having a little look in the margins, just looking at the Daphne and the fry just moving about a little bit. And my middle rod absolutely roared off. Hooked into this fish, started to kite right. Felt very powerful to begin with anyway. Um, d d made a few lunges out in open water. Managed to turn it, bringing it back slowly through, through a couple of weed beds. But where I was fishing my rods so tight, it had unfortunately picked up the uh, right hand rod. So I got it probably about 25 yards out and it was coming back ever so slowly, ever so slowly. 
and then I started to hear the telltale beep of the, of the alarm on the other rod. And whilst the line wasn't moving, it was obvious that the fish was slowing down. I couldn't move it anymore. So Elliot kindly whacked the chest waders on, waded out there like the legend he is. And we didn't, he didn't say too much, but I knew from him not saying too much that it was a good one anyway, or one of the originals. Um, luckily, it bobbed up on the surface again, took a gulp for air, and Elliot put the net under it. Um, he just turned to me with a big cheesy smile, and I knew then that it was mission accomplished. We'd come, and we'd, we'd come to catch an original, come to get bites, and we'd done both of those things. So obviously, once he was in the net, um, you know, and we've got everything sorted, ready to weigh him and photograph him. When I collapsed the net down, I was really keen to have a look at him and, and see, you know, a slice of history, so to speak. And, you know, carrying him up there, I could, he was a powerful fish, you know, for an old fish, still very powerful. Um, you know, letting you know who was boss sort of thing as you, as you put him on the mat. When I rolled back the landing net mesh um, and unveiled him, it was just, uh, just a sight to behold, really. Um, to be able to look and just gaze along, you know, its flanks, big, leathery side on him, odd scale about, um, and just beautiful melted fins. Um, just a real slice of, of history that I've been lucky enough to, to touch, to catch, to put in my album. Something that I'll, I'll always remember from this trip and, and in my angling as well. Um, you know, a fish like that are, are starting to be few and far between in modern day angling now. So to catch them while they're still around is, is a real pleasure. So as you can imagine, when I, when I held him aloft for the photos, it was just, I couldn't stop smiling. You know, a big grin all over my face. It was just, you know, one of the highlights of my fishing year so far. Obviously, you know, the rain had come back in again. So we took him out, you know, real nice majestic fish. I wanted to have a nice return and shot with him in the water. When I lifted him out the uh, waist sling in the water and you know just put him back and he just looked moody and, and a bit dank out there, the rain coming down. It didn't really bother me, I was as happy as Larry, you know, to catch something like that uh, is it's just something you dream of about really. Um, and when I you know slipped him back, um, pumped my fist aloft to celebrate, um, knew that it was you know, a mission accomplished, so to speak. Uh, if I talk about my highs and lows from this session, my highs would be firstly to come and actually wet a line in what is a beautiful, beautiful venue. Um, I'm lucky enough to have been given the chance to come and have a go. To, to get amongst them in the fashion that I have um, and catch the numbers that I have has been a great high for me. Just proving that the methods I use are successful not just on the waters I'm fishing at the moment but on other waters and I can take that in my angling and use that in other waters as I go to fish other lakes. I suppose one of the actual real bonuses of the trip and which is actually really nice is as you can see it's actually stopped raining for once. You know, for 24 hours I've had solid rain. I've pretty much slept in my waterproofs the whole trip. It's not been comfortable, it's not been pleasant. Um, I'm quite blessed now that it's stopped raining. I'm going to fold my kit away and, and scarf her before the weather changes again and I'll get absolutely even more wet than I already am, if that's possible. And probably the highlight, well, well undoubtedly the highlight was the original at, at 27 2, um, a little radish. You know, that's really made my trip. Um, I think it made the trip probably for Elliot as well. He was as excited as what I was to see that on the bank. Um, in terms of lows, I've I've dropped a couple of fish. Um, I think sometimes in some of this weed, it, some of it's quite underlined, it's quite thick. You know, so occasionally you are going to you are going to suffer a little bit of misery with hook poles, etc. Um, would I do anything different? No, probably not. I think the methods have worked quite well. Um, in fairness, I maybe have given them even more bait to begin with and tried to hold real numbers of fish there. But all in all, it's been a great trip. One that I'll never forget. And one that I'd like to repeat here someday soon.